Back in the early 70s, I came to New York City to be a big time magazine editor. <laughs> My uh, high school dream was to work for one of the Condé Nast magazines. And, um, you know, when I grew up, the only women you saw um, in the 50s in the movies were either reporters, journalists, magazine editors, um, or secretaries. Women didn't work. So I didn't have a lot of role models other than, of course, teachers and um, sort of that usual uh, line of work that most women did at that time. So um, I grew up wanting to be a writer and wanting to, to be a journalist and come to New York City. So I, uh, my first job out of Howard University <clears throat> was at the Indianapolis News as, as a reporter. And uh, I was the first black reporter there, and I worked for the women's pages. Um, and uh, I was able to, um, to do articles on daycare and um, sex education, which was such a hot topic back then, probably still is, um, and bring those kinds of issues to, um, to a pretty conservative newspaper. Um, at that time, I I had always wanted to go to New York, and I knew that Time Life Books was hiring. And so I got an interview and um, I was hired to be a books researcher. So I came to New York City in, um, <clears throat> in 1971, working for the Books Division, and uh, began freelancing um, uh, as a home furnishings editor for Essence magazine. And uh, then I eventually left Time Life Books and went to Red Book Magazine and ultimately Black Enterprise Magazine where I was going to start the first black lifestyle magazine. So I, had, I was almost there fulfilling my dream. And uh, as we were working on the first issue of the new magazine um, that was called Verve that I was going to be uh, editor-in-chief of, the publisher of Black Enterprise decided to buy radio stations and not publish the magazine. And so that brought me to a, a crossroads. Um, should I stay and work in public relations for Black Enterprise or do something different? So I decided that maybe writing about Oriental rugs and, you know, apartment living, um, maybe there were some other more substantial things I could do. Because when I originally came to, to New York, I, I really wanted to work and write articles, um, socially conscious articles for women's magazines. But they weren't really quite ready for socially conscious articles. <laughs> And so there was a lot of frustration there for me. So I took the opportunity to become a speech writer and work in a state agency. And um, I went to work for the State Division of Housing and really began to, to meet a lot of political appointees and get more politically involved. I'd already been working um, in the women's rights movement in New York City, going to meetings of now and and those kinds of organizations. But working in the state agency um, put me into a pool with um, more political people in the city. And so um, when the Jesse Jackson campaign, his first campaign for president got started, um, some of the, my colleagues I was working with said, why don't you go and get involved in, in that campaign? So uh, I went to one of their first organizing meetings that was um, being organized by David Dinkins, who eventually became New York City's first black mayor. And uh, it also turned out that David Dinkins um, had grown up in Trenton, New Jersey with my father. And I had grown up in Trenton. And so when I walked into the campaign, it was sort of like old home week. Um, and I came out of the, I walked out of that meeting as the public relations director for the Jesse Jackson campaign uh, in New York City, and it was very exciting.
it was life changing uh, for me to get involved in electoral politics. And as the public relations person working with um, regular community folks who were running for delegate and doing that kind of work, promoting those delegates, I got a chance to really go around the city and around the state and to begin to understand um, activism across neighborhoods in New York City and how some of those neighborhoods um, had really effective advocacy, had good benefits, um, were holding government accountable. And then I had a chance to see how there were other neighborhoods where that wasn't happening. So after um, being involved in the Rainbow Coalition and Jesse Jackson not, not winning, um, many of us uh, got involved in the Mondale campaign. And then ultimately after that, um, and he didn't win, <laughs> Um, I was asked if I might consider running as a Democratic district leader. Um, I had bought a house in West Harlem um, and I began to think about that and um, at the time I was pretty quiet, introverted, sort of more the profile of a writer. <laughs> um, and I thought, wow, this would kind of give me a push to you know, be a little more assertive, bring my ideas out there. Um, because, you know, people said, do you really want to stay behind the scenes and produce other people? Or do you want to get out front and put your own ideas out there? And um, it seemed like a great opportunity. Um, uh, Bill Lynch, who had run David Dinkins' campaign and the Jesse Jackson campaign, um, was going to run my campaign. And so I did run. During um, my organizing, um, to, to run in the primary, um, I began to organize community residents to be part of my campaign. And they came to me and said, what are you going to do about the North River Sewage Treatment Plant? And I said, what plant? And they said, well, this plant's uh, been being constructed uh, in the Hudson River, and we think um, community residents should have jobs there. So initially, we thought this was about jobs. and. Uh, I was running with a male district leader, and so we got together and said, let's organize people to get jobs there. And so we, in fact, um, were able to get 30 people hired there. And maybe a few months later, the plant actually began operations. And that's when we realized there was a problem. Odors and emissions were being emitted from the plant. All of the community residents who lived right along Riverside Drive you know, obviously right opposite the Hudson River, um, were the most affected. And so they were the ones who, you know, said, you know, it's, it's time for you to step up. Um, senior citizen women pretty much came to me and they said, and it's time for a new generation to take some leadership on these kinds of issues. 